Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to a uh, trivia day. So Monday is trivia day, and we call it Monday is Fun Day. So last Monday, we kicked off with our first um, episode of trivia, and it turned out maybe it was a little bit easy for a lot of you wine uh, geeks out there. So get ready. We have some more challenging questions for you today. And today's theme is all about oak, and we have two hosts that are going to uh, delivered the trivia today, so let me bring Janet and Monica onto screen. Hello, ladies. Hey. Great. Welcome. Well, r- really excited about your trivia. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about the format, and then we'll we'll get rolling. All right. So, um, so like Christian said, I'm Janet Campen, uh, instructor and diploma advisor for the school here. Uh, and joining me today is another awesome instructor, uh, Monica Vielka Viscovi. Um, and we're going to get real geeky with you guys today about oak. So anything to do with oak from uh, it growing in forests to its production, turning into barrels and its influence on wine. Uh, so what we'll do today is we'll trade off Monica and I reading questions. Um, we'll give you about 20 seconds to answer. Put your answers in the chat um, and keep track of which ones you get right or wrong. You're going to hear some Jeopardy music, uh, for those of you familiar with that game show. Uh, And after the music's over, we'll reveal what the correct answer is uh, and give you a few more facts about about that question and the correct answer if necessary as well. And if you have any questions uh, at any time about some of the trivia facts, please feel free to put them uh, in the chat box as well, and we can get to them after trivia is over. And so Monica's going to take it away with the first question. Okay, so which of the following white grape varieties known for having a particular affinity for new oak? Is it the Riesling, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, and Chardonnay? So what are your question uh, answers to this? And uh, if you could write why in your answers, that would be fantastic as well. So fantastic, you've done so well. Uh, D is the answer, it is Chardonnay. So Chardonnay is non-aromatic grape varieties and non-aromatic grape varieties have more affinity to oak than aromatic grape varieties like for example Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling where we want to preserve those refreshing uh, qualities and um, the aromas of aromatic grape varieties. Okay. What is the word that refers to the length of time and level of heating that's applied to oak staves to bend them into shape, as you can see in the picture here? Is it A, toasting, B, seasoning, C, charring, or D, warping? So it sounds like a lot of you got this one correct. It is A, toasting. Um, So that is where we apply heat uh, in the form of fire through a brassiere, which you can see here, or a brazier, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, And it uh, it will toast uh, the inside of the barrel, um, which helps to dry 
uh, the wood um, and so drying up the moisture that's in the stave itself so that you can then bend it into place as it's drying. Uh, and it's real important that you get the, the oak barrel nice and dry once it's bent into shape. That way it doesn't warp back out again. Uh, seasoning wasn't the correct answer here. That's actually when you dry the staves uh, out um, where they actually uh, cut the wood. Um, and so they'll place them outside for about two to three years and dry the wood that way and reduce about 20, 30 percent of the moisture at that point. An important thing about seasoning is also that the length of seasoning will also influence the quality of wood. Mm -hmm. with, uh, with more seasoning, um, you actually develop more eugenol um, aromatic compounds, which give that clove, uh, that clove aroma. How many liters are we? So A, 224 liters, B, 225 liters, C, 227 liters, and D, 228 liters. So most of you were right, it is B, it's 225 liters. This is the most common barrel, it originated in Bordeaux, um, and it's the most popular size in the wood. The size of the barrel matters because it indicates um, how much uh, oak and how much uh, flavor will be input into the wine. Okay, which of these are not aromas typically imparted to a wine by oak barrel alternatives, such as staves or oak chips? Is it A, vanilla and clove? B, smoke and toast? C, hazelnut and dried fruits? D, coconut and dill? Okay, the correct answer here is C, hazelnut and dried fruits. The reason for this is that those two aromas are typically a result of oxidation, um, which you do get with oak barrels, but when we put individual staves or oak chips, which could be charred so that you could get that smoke and toast or um, you know, could be made from European or American oak, so you could get coconut and dill, vanilla or clove from those. Um, but when you introduce those, you're not introducing any sort of oxygenation to the wine, so you're not going to have an oxidized quality. Uh, you do have the option as a winemaker, you could introduce oxygen uh, at several stages of the process um, during maturation. You could bubble oxygen through, through the wine um, and other methods of oxidation um, to introduce those aromas, but you aren't going to get those from the staves or oak chips. Okay, hey, you ready for more? Let's see true or false. Larger oak vessels have a much greater effect on the wine than small oak vessels. True or false? <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, it's like I see resounding balls, and you are correct. It is actually small oak barrels, so small small oak, oak vessels that are implementing um, uh, more flavor and have much greater effect on the wine. Um, it is important for a winemaker to choose the size, because size of the barrel because that will greatly influence the style of wine they are going to produce. All right, this one might be a tough one for some of you out there. Let's look at the picture here. What is the barrel traditionally called at this stage of the production process? before the oak stays have been fully bent into place? Is it A, a floret, B, a rose, C, fringe, or D, petal, meaning petal in French? This one proved to be a tough one. It's actually B, rose. Um, so, it, I mean, it probably looks more like a petal here or a fringe, but um, they actually do call it at this stage a rose. And the, actually, a fun fact, the process of putting the individual staves, there's going to be about 26 to 28 of them, um, all lined up and measured properly um, and nicely fitted like this with only one hoop at the bottom. Um, it's actually called mise en rose, which for you chefs out there, you might recognize that similar to mise en place, where you get all of your components ready together uh, before you cook it. Um, so mise en rose, that's what this is. Right, so what is the minimum required oak aging time for the Rioja Gran Reserva? Is it A, 18 months? B, two years, C, three years, or D, five years. So this one seems to be a hard one. It is a hard question because there are different requirements um, in the region for different styles of wine. However, the correct oak aging time is minimum of two years. But you might be thinking for, about aging, Rioja Gran Reserva aging, a minimum aging time is five years. Two of those have to be in oak with the rest in a bottle. And again, that is only a minimum. Many producers will age their wines for even a longer period of time because Rioja Gran Reserva is made with the best quality uh, grapes to make the highest quality wine that will age for decades. All right, this might prove to be another hard one here. Which oak species has the lowest oak lactone content that contributes the coconut aromas? Is it A, Quercus alba, B, Quercus sicilis, or C, Quercus rober?
Um, what might have been a hint on this one, if you happen to know what the oak species is um, for American wines, um, which tend to have those coconut aromas. Um, actually, A is not the correct answer, uh, Quercus alba, uh, which is um, one of the main species for American oak. The answer is actually C, Quercus rover, uh, which is uh, from the Limousin um, forest of France, uh, just east of Cognac. Uh, one of the largest uh, oak forests um, in Europe. Um, and uh, it, it really doesn't have um, a lot of oak lactone among all the different species. Um, so it really doesn't impart much coconut aroma to a wine. Okay, what is the capacity of Burgundy barrel? Is it A, 225 liters, B, 228 liters, C, 300 liters, and D, 500 liters. So most of you um, decided that it was B, this is 228 liters Burgundy barrel, uh, very slightly from the Bordeaux barrel, which is 225. Uh, 300 liters uh, barrels, for example, are used in a cognac production, and 500 uh, liters barrels are often used for fermentation. Okay, now let's look at the pictures here. Which of these pictures shows the method for cutting staves, so those planks that we use to assemble the barrel, cutting staves from American oak? Okay, so um, what could have been a hint here is if you happen to know uh, which, uh, which type of oak barrel is more expensive, uh, you can kind of uh, extrapolate from this that looks like you get a lot more planks out of uh, uh, the, the cuts on A than you do on B. Um, and American oak um, does cost less. Um, and it actually isn't as porous as... Um, uh, European oak. So it is, uh, the correct answer is A. Uh, and the reason for that is that European oak uh, tends to have a lot more um, what we call tyloses, which are like uh, channels that uh, that the, the water and sap run through, um, extending from the middle uh, heartwood out to the bark. Um, and you actually need to cut on European oak, you need to split the wood uh, along those channels in order to make it watertight. Uh, with American oak, um, the inside sap is actually a little more viscous, um, and so it can actually act as a sealant when you make a cut. Um, so we can cut it any which way, and for you carpenters out here, you might recognize A is what we call quarter sawn. Okay, so that the previous question is, was, seemed to be tough uh, and geeky, but we're moving along. Um, Aged for three years in previously used oak whiskey barrels, best describes A. Oloroso Sherry, B. Tony Port, C. Repasado Tequila, D. Tabasco Sauce. What do you think?
you couldn't decide, but we have all of the questions, answers to these questions um, on our board. So uh, the interesting fact here is that it is a Tabasco sauce. Well, the hint here would be um, that for none of uh, the above, we'll use the whiskey barrel. Um, but if you look into, for example, Reposado Tequila, that would be aged for two to 12 months in oak. So that would also be um, an information for you that that wouldn't be a Reposado, but uh, um, pot would not be uh, aged in whiskey barrels. Question. Okay, which part of the oak tree tends to have more tannins? Is it A, the bottom of the tree or the base of the tree that meets the ground? Is it B, middle of the tree? Or C, crown of the tree? Okay, for those of you who said A, you're absolutely correct. It is the bottom of the tree. Uh, and the reason for this is that it takes a good one to two decades for tannins to develop and get to the part of the wood um, that we use for the staves. Um, and so the bottom of the tree will have more tannins, what we call the gala tannins, which are uh, soluble um, when in contact with oxygen. Um, so in the wine, those are the ones that offer those protective qualities. Um, not so much adding astringency to the wine, um, but definitely adding to uh, the overall protection of the wine so that it can age longer. Um, now, it, um, an oak uh, forester um, is not going to provide you uh, staves that are only from the bottom of the tree if you want more tannins, um, because when they season the wood, they actually uh, mix them all up so that um, by the time that the barrel makers uh, and Cooper do receive uh, those staves. Um, you you aren't sure if you got bottom of the tree, middle, or crown. Okay, so we're almost there. A few more questions, so stay with us. Put those answers in because we're really curious how we're going to do in the trivia. So now, how many times can an oak barrel be used before it's neutral? Is it once, twice, three to four times, or D, six to eight? That is true. The C or three to four um, yes uh, is when the barrel becomes neutral. When we start the aging wine in a barrel, you are able to get more of the, of the anilinium and the chemical reaction that will get more of the flavors into the wine, will impart all more flavors. And then when the barrel ages, uh, we will still use it and we will use it for its oxidative qualities. Okay, which type of oak will tend to produce the slowest rate of maturation? And by this we mean uh, maturation uh, in the barrel with the wine. Uh, is it A, Hungarian, B, French, C, American, or D, English?
Okay. Uh, this one was kind of a trick question. It's actually a Hungarian. Um, this is a, a type of oak that's um, just starting to make its uh, make its presence known, uh, especially here uh, in the States, uh, especially out in New York, uh, Finger Lakes area and other uh, regions. Um, the reason that Hungarian oak is actually one of the slowest for maturation is because of how slow the trees actually grow and the density of the forests out there. Uh, when you have a lot of trees in close proximity to one another, they tend to grow uh, not very far this way, but um, more upwards, more straight. Um, and it actually uh, creates a denser uh, oak, um, you know, a denser uh, um, oak, uh, um, the cellular structure. Um, so it has less... Um, less ability to impart those phenolic compounds such as tannins uh, and uh, and anything from the oak itself, not so much from the toasting, but, um, but from uh, the oak itself as far as aromatic qualities go. Um, French uh, would be the next slowest uh, as far as rate of maturation, and those are typically used for, um, for wines that need to age uh, decades. Um, in bottle um, will be the choice of, uh, of winemakers there. It's French. Okay, which type of oak tree reaches maturity sooner? So we were in previous question, we were talking about um, maturing in oak, but now look at the trees and think, is it an American oak or European oak? Okay, so we see that your answers are split between American oak and European oak. The reason why I was giving you a hint to look at the maturation in oak, uh, uh, the same happens um, you know, when it comes to the uh, maturity of uh, oak tree. So American oak is the answer. American oak um, matures quicker. And um, this could also contribute to the price of American oak, which will be uh, slightly lower than those of uh, French oak. The, some of the European oak, uh, of course, not all, but the French oak will be much higher in price as well. Okay, which of these is not a French oak forest? Uh, if you look at the map here, um, you might be able to get a hint. Um, a, Limousin. B, Vosges. C, Troncé. D, Sylvestre. For those of you who said D, you're correct. It is Sylvest is not a French oak forest. Fun fact, I made up that word uh, kind of based off of uh, what we call uh, a person um, who, um, or the study of and production of uh, of oak forests um, for uh, for barrel productions called silviculture, uh, similar to viticulture. Uh, Limousin is that uh, is that forest um, that I mentioned earlier that's just east of Cognac. Uh, largest in France, um, produces the coarsest rober um, species of oak. Um, the Vosges, um, some of you may have said that because you thought, wait, that's a mountain range. Um, it's also actually a forest just on the other side of that mountain range. 
um, and that would be Quercus uh, sicilis for that. Same for uh, Trance, which is kind of halfway between the Loire and Burgundy. All right, so about how much water and alcohol evaporates per year from an oak barrel? Is it A, 1 to 3 percent, B, 2 to 6 percent, C, 4 to 8, and D, 8 to 10? Remember, we're looking at one year. Okay, so we've got A and B as the major answers. And for you who answered A, 1 to 3%, you will be right. That will be Angel's Show. We call that uh, Angel's Show, particularly, you know, that uh, uh, phrase from whiskey production um you know, there's also a movie of that name if you wanna um if you ever want to uh hear a little more about uh, the whiskey production and the angel chart itself so the alcohol and water evaporates uh, during um the year lowering the um, um amount of the liquid but it also helps um with uh maturation and um, and the angel uh, share helps also making the liquid smoother. Okay, now this one uh, is, is a toughie. Um, I'm going to read it twice just because uh, there's a lot of info here. So true or false, all things being equal, wines that are fermented and aged in oak barrels have less vanillin than wines that were fermented in stainless steel and aged in the same type of oak barrel for the same length of time. So all things being equal, wines fermented and aged in oak barrels have less vanillin than wines fermented in stainless steel tanks, which were then aged in oak barrels, true or false? So it sounds like um, the room is divided on this one. The correct answer is actually true. Um, for those of you who thought, well, if I'm fermenting um, in stainless steel, I'm not in contact with oak, so there would be less vanillin or the vanilla uh, aromas that we get um, from the wine. Um, but actually, there's another consideration at play here, and that's that most yeasts out there actually metabolize vanillin. Um, and so if you are fermenting uh, in oak, a lot of the vanillin that would naturally uh, leach out into the wine um, is actually then metabolized by the yeast. So we actually get, uh, we get less vanillin than if we actually um, did it in stainless steel tanks uh, and then aged in oak barrels. Um, and so if, you know, a lot of the vanillin actually is, um, is extracted from the wine towards the beginning um, when it's in contact with uh, with the, the wine and barrel. Um, and so if a lot of the vanillin is then extracted towards the beginning of fermentation and then metabolized, there's not going to be a lot left over for extraction during the maturation. Great. Well, thank you both to you, Monica and Janet. Not only was this a trivia 
um, session, but a, really a masterclass on on Oak. So uh, hopefully if you didn't get all the answers right, you've learned some pretty uh, amazing things here from these two fantastic minds. Um, thanks so much, ladies, and uh, looking forward to having another uh, trivia with you uh, really soon. Um, in the meantime, uh, keep keep uh, thinking up some good questions. These were some tough ones, so thanks so thanks so much. All right, everyone. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Just as a reminder, uh, you can join us back here on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, for another study hall session. We'll be going through uh, another tasting note uh, this this week uh, at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, Saturday, we have another special guest uh, for you. We'll be posting information about that uh, very soon as well. And then Mondays from now on, since demand is high, uh, we will be having uh, Monday Fun Day, which is our trivia uh, trivia day. So uh, different topic each each time and uh, different hosts uh, as well. So thanks so much for joining us. Hope you had fun. Uh, stay safe out there and we will see you back here on Wednesday. Cheers.